Hey guys, okay, so now it's about that time of the year that I like to start saving seeds from my tomatoes. This is really easy, it's really quick, and what's nice is that in the spring, when it's time to plant tomatoes, I don't have to go and buy like a $3 tomato plant. You know, what's the point of spending money on this fruit when you can grow it yourself for free and you can keep it going year after year? So this is how you save seeds for next season. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is wash your tomato. And then you want to just cut it on the side here. And we want to get all those beautiful seeds that are right here. So you see all the seeds right there? You want to just put these... I'm going to take these little seeds and put them into a little cup. So you've got like the gel from the tomatoes and then the seeds too. And then what you want to do is just let this sit for about two or three days. And it's going to kind of get moldy and smell funny and it's basically just fermenting. So just let that sit for a couple days and I'll come back and show you what to do. Okay, so it's been about three days and the tomato seeds are kind of gross looking and moldy and I think they're just a little fermented and they're going to smell kind of bad. That's what you want. You want it to be a little fermented and look kind of gross. So the next step after this is to rinse them in a, a, some sort of strainer. And then on a little sheet of parchment paper, you want to get the seeds out of the strainer and put them on the parchment paper. And then once they're all on the paper, you want to separate each seed separately so that they're not touching so that they can dry properly. And then you want to let this sit for however long it takes to completely dry these seeds, maybe a week or more. They need to be absolutely bone dry so you can store them for the winter. So I'll come back and show you the way that they look after they're completely dry. Okay, so it's been a couple days. It took a little less time than I thought. It didn't take a full week for these to get completely dry. And if you look at them really closely, you can see that they've got little kind of hairs on the sides of the seed. Then you know it's ready to package up for the winter. So then you can just put it into a little bag. It's probably better to do like a paper bag just to give it a little bit of air but all I've got is this plastic bag here so make sure you label it and you can keep it for the winter and then you can plant them next year so you don't have to buy seeds and you don't have to buy a plant and it's perfect so next I'm going to show you how to make homemade marinara sauce with all your tomatoes that you've grown so the first thing you want to do, of course, is wash your tomatoes, and it's up to you, but I like to peel the skins off, so I just cut a little X at the bottom of the tomato and then blanch it for like 30 seconds, and then the skins peel right off. And then after that, you want to just uh, cut up your tomatoes into little chunks. And then you want to saute um, probably like a whole bulb of garlic if you're making a lot. Uh, in some olive oil or any other kind of oil and then I like to put basil in there and saute that for a minute or so and then add your tomatoes and then I have enough here that fills the, this entire um, pot so uh, and then this is after about an hour of simmering so you want to bring it to a boil and then simmer it and 
total time I simmered this was for seven hours. So this right here is after three hours of simmering. And you can see that um, the liquid has evaporated and it's getting thicker. And then this is about six hours later and see how it's thickening up quite a bit. And you can see that the, the line is going down on the sides and you can tell that it's uh, losing a lot of its moisture and it's thickening up quite a bit. Okay, so now it's been about seven hours and it's gone down quite a bit. It's thickened, it looks so good, it smells absolutely amazing. So you can simmer it how, however long you want. And then after this, I just put it into glass jars and store it in the fridge for, I don't know, five days or so. And then if you don't, if you want to store it for longer than this, you can put it into plastic bags or plastic containers. I don't recommend freezing it in glass. I've done this before with like chicken stock and that sort of thing. And it just cracks and then you've got a mess on your hands. So, and then I love to put it on pasta, gluten-free pasta, of course, and it's so good. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.